Hi, welcome back to Mr. Mig's Classroom. I'm Mr. Mig, and I'm going to talk about the FAA Part 107 exam. So if you're trying to get your drone license, this is the place to be. Please like and subscribe to my videos if they've helped you with your uh, exam study. I greatly appreciate that. And put your comments in the comment section. I always like hearing from you. Tell me how you did on the test. Um, tell me how the studying is going. Anyway, in this video, we're going to continue making our flashcards. In the last video, uh, we started making some flashcards. And in this video, what I want to do is I want to focus on flashcards for airspace. So this is going to be airspace flashcard video. So uh, let me just fast forward to where we're going to go here. So here's the second set of flashcards. All right. So what I want to focus, um, like I said, what I want to focus on this video is airspaces. So all these flashcards are going to be about airspaces. What flashcard should you have for your airspace? And I obviously want to start that off by talking about MSL, mean sea level. This is a point of difficulty sometimes for my students is recognizing that there's two ways to measure altitude. One is above sea level, which is the traditional way in aviation, just because of traditional measurement systems. Uh, measuring altitude above sea level was uh, easier during early aviation. Uh, the other reason is it creates a flat plane, but we'll talk about that in a moment. All right, so mean sea level, that's MSL. It will often be written on the test as MSL, so you need to know that means mean sea level, and that's just saying how high you are above the sea level. And this is even used if you're in, say, Colorado or Kansas or somewhere where you're not near the ocean. Uh, and it's also used for all controlled airspace categories except class ECHO, except for class E. So A, B, C, and D all use mean sea level to say how uh, high their ceilings and floors are. AGL, which is another acronym you will see, and they'll spell it out using the AGL uh, acronym, is above ground level. And that's exactly how it sounds. It's what's your altitude above ground level. This is used predominantly for class ECHO airspace. Uh, you also see some other things too, but I would say MSO is used more common. If you are not sure what the elevation is, I would say on the test, go with MSL. MSL is more often the answer. And you will see questions that ask you, what is the ceiling of this airport's airspace? And it will give you three answer choices. Maybe one will say 1,700 feet MSL, 1,300 feet MSL, or 1,700 feet. Feet AGL. The answer here is probably 1700 feet MSL, and it's just seeing if you know whether it should be an MSL or AGL. Okay, let's start with our airspaces. Our first airspace is Class A, Class Alpha airspace. Remember, if I say Class Alpha, it is the same exact thing as saying Class A. Alpha is just the phonetic uh, aviation alphabet. Um, this airspace is not an airspace you'll fly into using a drone. It starts at 18,000 feet MSL, so above sea level. It covers the entire nation and is used for long distance travel. I know you're not gonna fly 18,000 feet up, even if, you know, say you're in Colorado, you're still not gonna be flying your drone into 18,000 feet MSL. Um, but the reason we need to know this is because the FAA wants us to, and they want to ensure that drones aren't flying into airspace where airplanes are traveling. The one thing the FAA really, really cares about more than anything else is safety, and so they don't want you flying at the, this altitude, which is why they make sure you know it. So just know that it's a blanket airspace. It covers the entire United States, starts at 18,000 feet MSL. And in its MSL, think of it like this. It's MSL and not AGL. It's mean sea level and not above ground level. This way it keeps the entire nation's airspace even. So if you're flying in an airplane and you start in, you know, the Carolinas and you're flying to California, if you stay at the same altitude the whole time based on MSL, you don't have to go up and down. You don't have to change your altitude if it's based on MSL. All right, our next airspace is Class B, Class Bravo airspace. This is designated for our biggest cities. These are our hub airports. So think of Atlanta, Miami, Los Angeles, Chicago, New York. So your hub airports. Um, generally, airspace from the surface to 10,000 feet. So when they're designating Class Bravo airspace, so, uh, it will go from the airport surface to 10,000 feet, MSL. 
uh, add. So when you're looking at these, and and if you want to go over airspace, I recommend that you check out my airspace video. But there will be uh, a a floor and a ceiling number. It will look kind of like a fraction, and you just add two zeros to the height of the floor and, and the ceiling. And again, these are flashcards, so I'm putting these in here for you so you remember that, that you add two zeros and not three zeros. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, I would pause this video and I would go watch the airspace video first. Um, but as always, you can also put comments in the comment section. Uh, multiple layers, it resembles upside down wedding cake. The reason I put this in the flashcard is it kind of helps you designate class B airspace. Um, Say you're colorblind. I've had students in the past who are colorblind and cannot see the difference between magenta and blue. One good way to re recognize Bravo airspace versus Charlie airspace is it's way busier. You're going to have five to six circles around a Bravo airspace, where Charlie airspace usually will only have two circles around it. We'll have the inner shelf and the outer shelf. Um, so the Bravo is just going to have a lot of circles around it, you know, again, representing that upside down wedding cake. Also, helps you understand when you say upside down wedding cake that the outer tiers don't touch the ground. They stay, uh, you know, they, they start at elevation and it could be any elevation, but um, only that inner tier by the airport starts at the ground. You obviously do need ATC authorization if you're going to operate in class Bravo airspace. <clears throat> Next up here is Class Charlie airspace. This is a solid magenta line. Um, these are for city airports, so regional airports, things like Raleigh, Myrtle Beach, um, Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, so not small airports necessarily, but not your hub airports. Uh, generally airspace from the surface to 4,000 feet above the airport's elevation. Um, elevation is charted in MSL, and I put this in here just so you're not confused. You're, you're just going to see numbers on there, and you got to know that all the airspaces, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta, are charted in an MSL. The exception is Echo. Echo is charted in AGL. So that's why I put it on the flashcard. It's charted in MSL. Usually has two tiers, like I talked about, though there could be some exceptions. On exception, Asheville, North Carolina. I would still say it's two tiers, but it looks like it's three. Uh, typically, we'll... Um, this will vary, but typically the inner circle is five nautical mile radius. The outer circle is 10 nautical mile radius. The reason I say it varies is class C's, they tend to vary. Some of them look a little different. Like I said, if you want to check out one that looks unique, check out the Asheville, North Carolina Clash Charlie airspace. Uh, and again, this if you're going to fly in Clash Charlie airspace, you need ATC authorization. And if you're wondering... You do need ATC authorization for all the airspaces, with the exception of sometimes Echo. That's why I put that in there. Echo is a little weird. We'll get to that in a second. Next airspace is class Delta airspace. Generally, airspace from the surface to 2,500 feet above the airport elevation. Again, this is still charted in, in MSL, mean sea level. It does require ATC authorization. Uh, one thing I should put in here, but I didn't just because of lack of space, and I do recommend you put in here, is... When the control tower closes on a Delta airspace, the airspace turns into an Echo airspace or an Echo and a Gulf airspace. And you're going to get tested on that. So uh, if you can fit it in on your flashcard, I do recommend that you put that in there. So when the airspace, when the control tower for a Delta airspace closes, it turns into an Echo or an Echo and a Gulf. It's not going to just be a Class G airspace. That will be a wrong answer on there. The correct answer is a Class E and, well, a Class E or a Class E and G, but not just a G. Um, this one has just one tier. Um, the reason I didn't put the uh, closing in there is I want to make sure to get these last two points, whoops, last two points in here, which is uh, the airspace floor um, right here. So airspace floor is ground level, ceiling is in a box. What I mean by that is you'll see this right up here. If you look over here on my screen, it's gonna switch, switch to the next slide, but um, just ignore that for a second. Just wanted you to see where I was talking about. So you see that 30 in a box there, that's saying that this airspace, this you know dashed blue line, right? This Delta airspace goes up to 3000 feet MSL. Um, so I wanted you to recognize that. It does look a little different. It doesn't show you the floor because the floor is the ground. 
And it's always going to be a ground with a delta because we're only dealing with one tier here. Um, if there's a minus sign, that's what this says. If there is a minus sign, so if this said negative 30, uh, this means that the airspace goes up to 2,999 feet MSL. So it's not including 3,000 feet. That will occur sometimes, especially if the class Delta airspace is within a, a region that has a class Bravo. So if you look at the map with Dallas-Fort Worth, which I saw on my test, um, that's definitely one where you'll uh, see that situation where the class Delta airspace goes up all the way until the class Bravo starts. Um, okay, uh, yep, so I wanted to get those in there. If you got any questions on that, please leave them in the comment section, especially that uh, question about when the control tower closes. Next airspace is our class Echo airspace. There are actually four types of Echo airspace. Um, so this one gets a little confusing. Uh, I'm going to leave out one of the types for the flashcards because it's just not a lot of questions on the test. And I talk about it in some other videos, uh, but I'll talk about the main types. So class Echo is controlled airspace. However, ATC authorization is only required when class Echo starts at ground level surrounding an airport. So we'll, we'll look at a picture of this in a second. Um, so meaning the other class echoes, technically you do not need ATC authorization. Um, it's only if it's surrounding an airport and starting at ground level. If, um, so one thing we want to know is that echo airspace is also kind of like alpha in the fact that it's a blanket airspace. It's really supposed to be a buffer between Gulf and alpha. So if there's no other class echo airspace, uh, class Echo airspace starts at 1,200 feet AGL, and that is not a typo. It starts at above ground level. So like I said, this is the one where we use AGL. So if you're in the middle of nowhere, say you're in some cornfield in Nebraska, and there's no airports around whatsoever, if you go up 1,200 feet, you are now in Class Echo airspace. That's true across the country. Echo airspace starts at 1,200 feet AGL. Now, um, it will go up all the way to class alpha airspace. So it goes up to 17,999 feet MSL. So we're switching between AGL and MSL here because alpha starts at 18,000 feet MSL and alpha is charted in class A airspace is what I mean when I say alpha. Class A airspace is charted in MSL. Okay, so here's one of the, probably the most important class echo is the class echo. If you see here, I got a picture of a class echo that surrounds an airport. So it's a dashed magenta circle. When you see this dashed magenta circle surrounding an airport, these are like really small airports. Um, so like the deltas are like, you know, regional airports. They have some flights, not very big. That goes really small airports um, that could have commercial flights. They do have commercial flights, but maybe they're one of those airports where they got one or two gates, maybe like two flights a day. Um, I've been to a few of them, really small airports. They don't generally have a control tower, and that's what the magenta, this magenta symbol with the runway means. It doesn't have a control tower. So what you need to know for this is the class echoes that surround airports are controlled airspace and do require ATC authorization. Technically, they, all the echoes are controlled airspace, but the ones that surround an airport require ATC authorization. That's the important difference here between this echo and the other echoes. They start at ground level, um, usually surrounds very small airports. And notice that there's no nothing here that's telling us the ceiling or the floor of this airspace. That's because we know the floor of this airspace is ground level because it's a dash magenta circle. And the ceiling, if you can guess it, go ahead and guess it. The ceiling of this airspace would be where class alpha airspace starts. It just goes all the way up to alpha. So the ceiling of this echo would be 17,999 MSL. Uh, if you've got any questions on that, leave them in the comment section. And remember to like and subscribe to my videos. All right, the next echo is the shaded echo. So we'll see this in even smaller airports, probably not getting commercial flights. Maybe they're used, maybe they're executive airports, maybe they're used for other miscellaneous things. Um, but these airports are technically, technically do not require ATC authorization. The thing about this to remember is in the shaded echo, this airport here, this Garrison airport, 
the echo airspace doesn't start until 700 feet AGL. So if you're right by the airport and you're flying, say, to, you know, 300 feet above ground level, you're fine. You're not in echo airspace. You're in golf airspace. You're in class golf airspace. Uh, so you do not need ATC authorization. But technically, even at 700 feet AGL, you still don't need ATC authorization. It is controlled airspace. And it's recommended you advise the air traffic control that you're going to be in there if you're going to be in there. Um, but uh, yeah, you technically don't need ATC authorization if you breach that 700 feet. Um, this is obviously what it's basically doing. It's just lowering that floor of the echo airspace in this specific area from 1,200 feet. Like I said, throughout the entire nation, echo airspace starts at 1,200 feet AGL. It's lowering that instead of starting at 1,200 feet, it starts at 700 feet in this area and still goes up to 17,999 feet MSL. But remember, this is AGL where it starts at. The shaded area starts at 700 feet AGL, not MSL. And that's all I have for you. I guess you could do one more flashcard if you want to, and you could call it Class Golf Airspace and just know that that's uncontrolled airspace and that's where you can fly um, without permission. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a like, share it, and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to upload more videos about the FAA Part 107 drone exam. Um, thank you for watching Mr. Mix Classroom, and I'll see you next time.